Hello everyone and welcome to my honest opinions on Overwatch. Small disclaimer, you might notice that the background isn't moving very much. This will be because when I try and record Overwatch on my computer the video lags horrendously. So instead I've taken a screenshot of it and set that as uh, full screen in Chrome. Hopefully that's good enough. That out the way, let's get to the review. So the whole point of this series is kind of to provide constructive criticism, I guess, of games that I liked or didn't like but have been thinking about for whatever reason. And I've now played a lot of Overwatch, so I figured it was it was do its turn. Um, I'm about a hundred hours in, and I show absolutely no sign of sign of stopping. I'm still nowhere near good, you know, comp especially compared to some of the people you see out there. But considering I've started from a position of being completely crap at FPSs, and I'm now sort of vaguely competent with a couple of characters on one FPS, I'm pretty satisfied with that. But the reason I've, I've kept playing this whole time is I love this game. It's so good. Like, again, like I said, the, the point of this series is to provide <coughs> criticism, you know, constructive criticism. Feel free to be as honest as I like about the games that I you know, have encountered. And it's very hard to actually find proper criticism of Overwatch. It's not perfectly balanced, but that's okay, because the dev team are constantly working on it and are always responsive to the community. Not all the heroes are fun to play or fun to play against, but that's okay, because there's a huge variety of them, and different heroes suit different players. There's always a counter to everything, especially if your team is coordinated, or if the person playing that hero isn't paying attention. Um, I've enjoyed playing almost all the heroes. I've certainly enjoyed playing all the ones I've put you know, more than one's, one game's worth into. I'm finding new ways to enjoy new heroes all the time. The game has insane amounts of depth. It's really interesting to watch pros. And one of the cool things about this game is that even though it's, a, in theory, a skill-based game, you know, to its very core, like it's an FPS, so to some extent you have to be able to aim, you have to be able to maneuver, I can still watch pro players and take things from them, both physical techniques and you know, things about their game sense, their spatial awareness, their positioning. I can take things from, like, insanely good pro players and bring them into my own play. You know, I'll do it in an incredibly clunky, amateurish fashion, but I can do that. I can watch really good people, I can learn from them. You know, when you watch the kill cam in Overwatch, sometimes you learn something new. It's not just like, oh, where was the, you know, that idiot standing? Um, you actually get to figure out, you get actual information on the battle about where your opponent is, whether they have their alt charge or whatever. And you get, maybe sometimes you get to learn, you, you see a new way of using a character that you hadn't thought of. It's, and the game is just really fun and satisfying. There's a lot of um, uh, very tactile feel to most of the characters. They're not only very characterful, like they're full of um, personality and distinct visual design, characterization. Um, but they have a very exciting physical experience of playing them as well. Like on the screen, Winston is a good random example. Um, Winston, if you haven't played the game, or haven't seen the trailers or whatever, Winston is, as you can tell, a big gorilla. Uh, you might be able to guess he's a bit sciencey. He is, in fact, a scientist. He's got a big lightning cannon and a jetpack. And Winston's go role is um, like a disruptive tank, so he can dive bomb people with his with his jetpack leaps, deal a bunch of damage, and then run away before they kill him. His gun doesn't have a very high DPS, but it can hit multiple targets at once, goes through barriers, hits automatically. So he has a certain amount of ability to counter um, heroes that are very nimble, uh, you know, hard to hit, or protected by a shield, because his gun ignores them. So he has, like, a place in the ecosystem. He can assassinate squishy things, um, he can deal with certain well-defended heroes in a way that other characters can't, providing, like, a release valve from a game balance standpoint. Um, and he's got this huge presence on the field. Like, a lot of the characters have this. They, they have a zoning ability, like the snipers, they have um, not only their characterful attacks, but they also have, you know, a very tangible ability to affect the game when you're playing against them. The tanks have this huge domineering positional presence where, you know, they say, here, is, here am I, here is my big shield that you can't get through. Here's my bubbles, here's my giant laser, in the case of Winston. I'm going to leap in on you and scatter you and break your team apart. Um, 
every character has something they can contribute to like the positional flow of a match which is really key to strategy in this game and i love that i love that's that's a joy for me because it doesn't involve aiming that's another thing about overwatch it's an fps that you can play even if you can't aim there are some characters that don't have guns at all some characters that don't have aiming required on their guns like winston uh, or Symmetra, who has like this lock-on laser beam thing. Um, and even the characters that do require aim will get a lot more out of just being in the right place at the right time um, than they will out of, you know, that extra like 5% hit chance or whatever that you might get if you trained a bit. You know, depending on the hero you're playing, the skill is still important, but the mental skill, your game sense, your awareness, your ability to work with your team, and your ability to communicate with your team if you're playing a voice chat, is really important. And that adds an intellectual layer to the game that as a primarily intellectual player, you know, I'm bad at shooting people, but I like thinking. Um, I really engage with. One of my favorite characters is uh, this guy called Junkrat. He's got a grenade launcher. Um, I like splash damage weapons, arcing fire weapons, rocket launchers and stuff, because I played on Real Tournament when I was in school. But um, Junkrat's joy is... Not only has he got quite a lot of damage output if you can land the shots, but he's really good at zoning. Which is so important in Overwatch, and it makes, you know, unlike other FPSs where you're just often trying to kill people, in Overwatch, there's a lot of you in a tight space fighting for position, both relative to each other and relative to the map. So being able to put these big bubbles of damage down with your very powerful grenade launcher, even if you never hit anything, just making the opponent run away still affects the game. I love that. This game is full of stuff like that. Um, like I said earlier, I genuinely struggle to find, like, real high-level criticisms of this game. Um, partly because the developers are so good at addressing them. Like, early on they had some complaints about, like, the diversity of their characters. So they've been working on that, and in fact they've actually got a lot of little background details either hidden in the game itself or in the things like the comics that they're using to unveil the lore that increase representation of different kinds of people, like, one of their flagship characters was recently revealed to be a lesbian, for instance. And that's like, it's not in the game, it's just something they added because it's cool. It's nice to do. I love to see people doing that in a, an authentic, kind of quiet way, rather than being like, this person is now gay, haha, -ha, look! You know, and like, giving her like a rainbow colored jumpsuit or something, because that's, it's like, it's garish. It's, it's better than nothing, but it's kind of too far in the other direction, if you know what I mean. It, makes it into, it makes it almost toy-like. It's like, hey look, we ticked off representation points. Instead, they've got this, they've got this character that everyone will like at the outset, and then they can reveal this detail that will allow some people to feel connected to her, or empathize with her, or feel connected to the game, and appreciate it as people more so than ever. And it's, it never has to get in the way, um, or be kind of too obviously shoehorned in so it looks a bit like you know garish or cartoonish which you know again still better than nothing but it looks kind of insulting when people do it wrong um so they're even getting like the social aspects right um actually i guess one one issue with overwatch is not so much with the game itself but with um the way people play it it's not it doesn't have the most toxic community we're not talking league of legends level here but the community can be quite demanding and again, it's a team-based multiplayer game. You have to rely on your teammates. The games aren't too long, but you're still dependent on each other and kind of slave to each other's whims and failures for the time you're there. So some people take that a bit too far and start yelling at each other. I don't think I've received any particular assault. I might have had one or two people get a bit lippy in the chat, at me or at other people, but it's not too hard to calm them down, I've found. Um, but obviously there's plenty of stories of horrendous toxicity, and in particular... Um, at high levels, people will regularly get flamed for taking off-meta picks uh, of characters. Like, if, they, if you take a character that's, you know, a little off the beaten path, people will yell at you. And that's obviously, that's not great. And I think maybe there are a couple of things in the game they could do with that. There's, a, there's, there's two characters in particular who are very prone to this, and not without good reason. Uh, Hanzo and Widowmaker, the two snipers. So, snipers are like this, this is kind of a big deal in... Um, FPS is anyway multiplayer. Everyone wants to be a sniper. Like the the story, the the stereotype of like the twelve year old kid on Call of Duty going, oh, "I'm a sniper." You know that it's rife and it's everywhere. And there's lots of people, especially in quick play, um, where it doesn't matter as much if you win or lose. 
in uh, Overwatch. There's lots of people who want to be snipers. They want to camp in the corner and be safe and be commanding over the battlefield and get loads of kills. Um, and quite often those players are just doing it because they want to feel cool and aren't usually all that good with the character. That in itself is fine. You can be bad at things. Not that you know, your teammates might be necessarily tolerant of that, but that's their failing. Being bad at things is okay. Um, but we now have this situation where these two characters that people tend to want to play are very hard to actually impact a game with. Like, you not only have to be good at killing people with them, but you have to be able to position yourself in the right place, deal actual relevant damage with the sniper character. And th again, this is a game all about positioning. If you're using the sniper to zone, that's fine. But actually, like, moving up and attacking and taking ground with a sniper is almost impossible. Um, unless you're really good. And then I have played alongside sniper players who've been, like, really on it with, like, getting key kills or dealing bursts of damage to help finish off people their teammates have shot at, um, and moving up with the team being aggressive. That can be very successful, but most of the time, it's not. And I wonder if, like, the developers could do something to mitigate that, either by changing the way those characters work slightly so they have more ability to move around, um, or somehow by... I don't know, if you, can you make a game without snipers? Can you make a game with snipers that don't look like snipers? Um, you know, something to, like, tempt people away from playing characters that are essentially bad unless you're a god. Um, and onto playing characters like, you know, healers. No one wants to play a support. Even though the supports in this game are generally really fun to play. And you see more and more people who've kind of realised this as you get higher levels into the game. Now, there's usually some healers, but, like, Myself and, and Katie, we play a lot of tanks and healers because people don't generally want to play tanks and healers. They want to play the shooty-shooty characters. And the irony is that in Overwatch, if you want medals for getting lots of kills and lo dealing lots of damage, play a tank. <laughs> they, <laughs> Overwatch doesn't reward you for getting like final blow kills like most games do. It rewards you for having contributed to kills, what it calls eliminations, which I think is a wonderful system. Um, most tanks have weapons that deal a lot of damage to like a lot of different, you know, sort of chip damage to a lot of different targets or have an area of effect. Most of them are, you know, constantly at the front lines, the center of the fighting. They're dealing damage to lots of characters. So if you want to rack up your eliminations, just play Arisa or Diva or have these kind of guns that never stop firing and just put bullets into the enemy team for the entire game. And yeah, you'll get loads of medals um, and feel really good about yourself. And I wonder if there's a way to like communicate that in the design. Because when you're, when you're, trying to coordinate a team in Overwatch, and when you're trying to just, at a very basic level, like, sit down, you're level one, you've never played the game before, how do you win? How do you take an objective? Your best ch chances are probably to play tanks, who are, you know, relatively easy to deal damage with, damage with, they don't require much precision, have high health bars, which makes them relatively forgiving, and they're really good at taking ground. They have these powerful protective or positional abilities that keep them alive, keep their teammates alive, and, you know, ultimately win the game. It's no accident that one of the most popular composition layouts in high-level Overwatch is out of your team of six, you have three tanks, two healers, and one DPS, which is, like, basically the exact inverse of what you normally see on the ladder, uh, especially in quick play, where everyone wants to be a sniper, everyone wants to be a DPS. The snipers are almost unplayed uh, in pro games because they're narrow. You know, they, they you have to apply them like a, a surgical knife. You can't just play them willy-nilly and expect to get good results. And I wonder if you could communicate that to new, coming, new incoming players somehow, either by changing the design of the sniper characters so they don't look like snipers or look as appealing. Um, you know, maybe making them lay traps or something so they have the same kind of zoning ability, but without the passivity and the immobility that characterizes uh, the two snipers and um, two similar characters that often fall into the similar role, Torbjorn, who is a chap who builds turrets, and Bastion, who's a robot that turns into a turret. And these are also common uh, new player picks. Bastion's actually particularly bad for this. He got a rework recently that made him a lot more mobile, which is really good. But um, he has his turret mode has a very big gun that puts out a large amount of damage. And obviously it's for, it's for zoning. It's a mobile. Um, he can't be in turret and move around or respond to the enemy at the same time. So he's kind of, until his rework, he was very niche. Uh, in pro play, but obviously in, especially against you know newish players, will just run into the line of fire, and against uncoordinated teams of like relatively inexperienced players like the teams I'm usually in, Bastion's quite effective. 
Uh, he's hard to counter, puts out a lot of damage. Your team has to work together to beat him. If they're not working together, they won't probably won't beat him. Excuse me. Um, because of this, Bastion usually does get a lot of kills and often gets play of the game, which is a little montage at the end that shows one particularly exciting thing that one player did. If there's a Bastion in the match, it's probably them, because at some point they probably got a quad kill by just holding down the fire button while people ran into the stream of bullets. Um, and that, again, gives like the wrong impression to new players. It's like, oh wow, this character is really good, it's really effective, you get loads of kills. Overwatch isn't about kills, necessarily. Kills help, because they help you take ground. And they reduce the enemy's ability to stop you from taking ground by killing you. It's all a means to an end. Um, even Bastion, like, his damage potential is insane, but what he actually does is keep people away from a point and divert their attention onto him. They can't position properly because there's this huge turret that will chop them to pieces if they stand in some line of sight of it for more than about a second. So they have to group up, flank, coordinate, respect the Bastion, and a good Bastion player can use that to their advantage and manipulate them. But of course, when you're brand new, no one knows that. Right? That's very hard to do. I couldn't do that. I've been playing this game for a hundred hours. I've... I don't know, I've played Bastion a bit. Like, I couldn't manipulate an entire enemy team with Bastion in that way. Like, that's really, that's a very nuanced thing to do. Um, but of course you don't see that early on, you just see like, oh man, this is a sniper, I can hide in the back, I can be safe, I can get loads of kills. Oh man, this Bastion guy gets loads of kills because he does loads of damage. Um, and what no one sees is like, the player who actually wins the game is the healer. <laughs> You know? Like, if one team has a healer and the other team doesn't, the team with the healer is like 90% to win, probably. Um, if you've just got a mercy on your team, that gives you a huge advantage over the opponent. People don't really see that. So I wonder if the game could do more to communicate that to new players. It's not really... I don't know if it can be considered a fault of the game, but it is certainly the sort of thing that good games do. It's kind of... And I think Overwatch is generally quite good with, like, letting you experiment, letting you figure out the game, it doesn't lock anything away apart from cosmetics. So the, the whole mechanics are always there. There's some tips, you know, the, the characters will at least tell you what they do, um, which is not very, you know, it's a bare minimum, but it's better than nothing. There's a training range where you could practice. But I think it would be cool to see more that looked at the on-ramping of the actual strategy of the game. Like, what are you supposed to do? Once you've learned how to, like, hold left click, hold right click, use your alt fire, your ultimate, whatever, once you've learned all that stuff, like, how do you use it? Where do you go from there? How do you, how do you go from, like, oh, I have this guy, he has a gun, he can shoot things. Oh, this girl can teleport, which means I can get out of the way of incoming fire. You know, that's a reasonable bit of logic. But, like, how do you change those things into, oh, this guy's gun is powerful and ranged, so he can control sight lines. Oh, this teleporting girl can flicker in, harass people, and then flicker out if she, whether or not she gets a kill, meaning the opponent will be disrupted trying to deal with her. Like, where do you work that kind of level of nuance that's actually really core to the game and core to the enjoyment of the game when you focus on that stuff. Um, and a key part of like the team play and the team interplay of Overwatch, where do you start teaching people that? Because right now I think that's only really, I only really gleaned that from like watching good people play. You know, I go on YouTube and I see people talk about like, oh, team coordination, oh, this is this kind of disruptive action, oh, this is all about positioning. And I'm like, Okay, I can learn from that. I can learn from that. But it's hard to figure it out yourself, even when you're me, and I love positioning. Like, I'm, I'm a positioning guy. I love Duelist because it's got positioning. All my games are, like, positioning everywhere, right? I, I, wrote, I cut my teeth on Warhammer 40,000. I've written, like, five different tabletop games. Positioning for days. And I would not have figured out most of this stuff by myself. You know, I can maybe start to intuit, like, oh, I can control space by firing, in, firing my grenades into this area, but, like... The sheer extent to which Overwatch revolves around positioning and relative positioning of teams is huge. Um, and I'd love to see something in the game to help teach that to people. Right, I think that's that's a pretty good way to... Uh, <coughs> that's a pretty good excuse for a game that I didn't really have any criticisms of, criticisms of going into this video. Um, like, again, Overwatch is a masterpiece. It's a wonderful game. Um, I think, it, for me, it's up there with, like, the portals and that kind of thing, and the annals of, like, perfect Storm games. It's, like, it's amazing, it's fun, it's accessible, but infinitely deep. It's challenging, but um, welcoming. It's warm, it's entertaining, but it's got a, a serious intellectual core. Um, it's good when you're brand new, it's good when you're, you know, 
fifteen thousand hour pro or whatever. Um, people have different opinions on it. There's something for everyone in this game. Like, there's almost nothing you can level at and say, level a finger at and say that's bad. And even when you can, the devs have so far shown a really good track record of hunting down these things and trying to find solutions. Um, so yeah, buy this game. It's awesome, I guess. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.